All right, so this is gonna be the uh, last little piece of our uh, circles unit. And we're gonna learn the equation of a circle, meaning how could you actually graph one? So for starters, it's um, difficult slash impossible to graph a circle on a graphing calculator because a circle is not a function. Can someone explain to me why a circle is not a function? Okay, so it fails the vertical line test. That's exactly right. Say that again. It doesn't have sides, or I guess you could argue it has just one side, but that's not why it's not a function. It's not a function because we have times where you have the same input, the same independent value for X that gives two different dependent values for Y. For example, if I were to put a coordinate here and call that oh, negative two, five, then down here directly below it would be the coordinate negative two, negative five. So both of these coordinates have an input of negative two, but different outputs. One's a positive five, one's a negative five. And that means it's not a function. So using your standard TI graphing calculator to graph a circle will unfortunately only graph half of it because the TI graphing calculator is limited to only graphing functions. Now there's workarounds where you can graph half the circle in Y1 and graph the other half in Y2. So it looks like you're graphing a circle, but in general, it's very difficult to actually graph. Now that doesn't mean you can't use your graphing calculator to put a circle on the coordinate plane. You can, but you have to use the draw function, not the graphing function. So I'm gonna take this circle and I'm gonna tell you that it is centered at the origin. So I'm gonna call this C for the center zero, zero. So this circle centered at the origin and that's the only number I'm gonna give you. I'm just gonna tell you it's centered at the origin and we're gonna figure out what the equation is just from that piece of information. So um, like all circles, this one has a radius and the radius is one of the things that you need to know to graph it. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a radius in here just like that. And I'm gonna tell you that this radius is of length R. And the point where the radius touches the circle, I'm gonna call point P. It's got some coordinates. I don't know what the coordinates are, doesn't matter. I'm gonna call it X, Y. X, Y, because I didn't give you any numbers. Sorry about that. No, I'm not. You're right, I'm not. So there's my circle centered at the origin with a radius of some length we don't know called R and the radius ends at some point we don't know called X, Y. So how are we gonna figure out the equation? Well, we're gonna get a little sneaky, which is that we are going to draw a triangle. We get a little sneakier. And the reason we're gonna do a triangle is because we know lots and lots of formulas that will help us with triangles. So I'm gonna draw a line going straight down, a perpendicular line here. So that's gonna be a right angle. And we'll call this one point um, S. Can someone tell me the coordinates of point S? Yeah, because y-intercepts are zero something. This is an x-intercept. The coordinate would be something zero. Why are you saying three? Three y-intercepts always start with zero because you go zero over and just up and down. This one goes zero up and down. It just goes left and right. So it's something zero. What's the something? S is the name of the point. You can't give me a number, but you can give me something better than a new variable. How far over did it go? X. X. See how this one's at X? This one's the same distance to the right, isn't it? So this one would be X zero. Ah, there it is, my favorite sound. Ah. So that one's X zero, it's the same distance to the right as point P was. 
and it's on the x-axis, so that's why we have zero. Isn't this crazy? We have three coordinates. And we don't know anything except the origin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pay attention. This is the tricky part. That was the easy part. This is the tricky part. Okay. So the reason we did a right triangle is because we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. And the reason we're going to use Pythagorean theorem is because R, the hypotenuse, is a distance. The radius is a distance. So I need to know how long is PS and how long is CS? So CS is the easiest. That's the easiest length to figure out. How long is side CS? X, very good. PS is a little more difficult. How long is segment PS? You don't need any new variables using just the variables we have. It's Y, yeah. How tall is it? It's Y. It starts at zero, it goes up to Y. What's that distance? Y. So I'm gonna take this uh, right triangle here, just the right triangle, and I'm gonna come right it out over here so that we're focused just on the triangle and not on any other piece. And you just told me, hopefully correctly, that this side was X and this side was Y. And we know from the problem that this is R, the radius of the circle. This might be, this might be the easiest Pythagorean theorem you ever do. One side squared plus the other side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And that, ladies and germs, is the equation of a circle. Oh, that's amazing. In order to graph a circle, you only need two pieces of information. To graph a circle, I need which two things? The, I need to know, the, not the origin, because the origin is always zero, zero. I need to know the center. Where's the middle of the circle? Doesn't have to be at the origin. Could be lots of places. And the second thing I need to know is, the radius, how long the radius is. So I'm gonna say length of radius. If I know those two things, I can graph a circle because I start at the center, I measure out to the radius, and then I just go all the way around, just like using a compass. The, uh, the geometry compass, not a like Boy Scouts orienteering in the forest compass. So this is what we would describe as being the standard form of a circle, meaning this equation, x squared plus y squared equals r squared works if the circle is centered at the origin, x squared plus y squared. What if it's not centered at the origin? Then we are screwed. No, it's almost exactly the same. Now this one we're not gonna derive, this one I'm just gonna tell you because deriving it takes a little longer than we wanna spend on it. So if the circle is not centered at the origin, the equation is almost the same. It is X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. And I'm gonna tell you what these variables mean. HK is the center. R is the length of the radius.
Hmm? It's exactly the same as the one we just did, except we have HK in there. Sure. All right, slow. While you're doing that, I'm going to open this awesome uh, calculator cover. Uh, hmm? I found a calculator. Man, this package is intense. Well, that's a terrible thing to say about a gift. You're not supposed to tell people how much the gift costs or that it was on sale or that you shoplifted it. I would describe this calculator as groovy. I guess. Want to get your own case? I think you can buy stickers that go on them too. Like that stickers that like overlap over this thing. Yeah. You could get something cool like maybe a uh, maybe a high definition photo of your math teacher to put on your calculator. <laughs> if they sell that. You know how like some businesses that have the pins at the checkout will like turn the pins into flowers because they're like nobody steals them because you'd be like, oh, this isn't my pen because it's got a gigantic flower on the end. It could be that way with the calculators. Nobody would steal them if they had a big picture of your math teacher on it. Unless they have a thing for your math teacher. And who doesn't? Like everyone in the pen. Aw. <laughs> Not everyone, right, Christian? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I also forgot no, I didn't. Hmm? No, I didn't I didn't make three and four or twenty-five. Sadly somebody got to those before I did. Not not make them, but like you can just make up new things. Yeah, do you want do you not like those numbers? Do you want different ones? No. I mean I recommend I recommend you keep twenty-five or at least some other number that is a perfect square. Why do I recommend that you keep a perfect square on the end? Because it's radius squared. So let's start off with that. That's the easiest part is the radius. So let's start there. 25 is the radius. So we know from our equation that it equals r squared. So that means r squared is 25. Which means r is? Oh, sorry. What? <laughs> That's, man, that hurts my heart. The radius is. I, if, even if you were thinking diameter, it wouldn't be 50, it'd be 10. That hurts my heart. I'm trying to decide which hurts my heart more. The fact that you treated the squared like a two or the fact that you solved it by multiplying both sides by two instead of dividing by two. Can't, <laughs> that part hurts my heart a little bit too. It's all right. It's important to make these mistakes in front of all of your classmates instead of in front of everyone at the state math competition. Okay, so next we're going to work on the center of the circle. And this is the part that's a little tricky because you will notice from the equation, it's X minus H, Y minus K. So when I have in this problem y minus four, the coordinate is not negative four. The coordinate is just four because the minus is part of the equation. So when I have x plus three, what coordinate is that? That's negative three. So the center 
is at negative three, four. And that really is the trickiest part of these equations is just remembering that since the minus sign is a part of the formula, the center is not the numbers in the formula. The center requires you to switch the signs. Okay, what if you get one that looks like this? I'm going to need you to elaborate on what you mean by it. X would be uh, one. Hmm. We have some disagreements. Some of you are saying one and some of you are saying zero and one of you is saying one and a zero. So clearly there's only one way to settle this and that is with a thumb war. Oh, or, okay, or a fight to the death, sure. I think a thumb war will be sufficient. Or maybe let's just avoid all violence, thumb or otherwise, and go back and look at our standard form, which was x squared plus y squared. Where was the center of the x squared plus y squared circle? It was at zero. So an x squared right there means the coordinate is zero. If you said one, what would that actually look like if I wanted a coordinate of one? X minus one squared. Okay, what about the y? It's a plus seven. So it's actually a negative seven. And oh my gosh, this poor radius. So the radius squared is 19. So what's the radius? Now if I type square root of 19 into the calculator, I'm gonna get something horrific and deplorable. It's gonna be some long, long decimal that the calculator cannot even contain. So instead, I'm just gonna say it's the square root of 19. So the radius is gonna be the square root of 19 and the center is going to be zero, negative seven. That's, I mean, that's literally what we did, square root of 19. So yes, not only can you, you definitely should. Okay, so I gave you the center, or sorry, I gave you the equation and you found the center and the radius. Let's go the other way. What if I gave you the center <laughs> I'll give you the radius as well. <laughs> Can't graph it if you don't have the radius. And the question that I want to know the answer to is, what's the equation? So the three variables we have are H, K, and R. Now R is pretty easy. It's the length of the radius. That's pretty simple. What's H and K? Mm-hmm, good. Just six, yeah. Now what you're thinking with negative six is what it's gonna look like after I put it into the equation. So my equation is X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. And now I just plug in those numbers. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make everything nice and color coordinated for you. So I'm gonna leave blank spots here where I'm gonna go back and put the numbers. So H was negative seven, K was six and R was four. So what we've written here is the equation for the circle, um, but it needs to be simplified. This is a correct equation that looks like trash. You would not get credit if you wrote it like this because it needs to be simplified. It it's pretty horrendous. There are two things really that are horrendous about it. What are they? Minus, Minus negative, negative is pretty horrendous. And four squared is, four squared is less offensive, but not great. So the minus negative seven should become, there we go, good job. 
I'm okay with the y minus six squared. That doesn't look bad at all. Four squared's not the end of the world, but let's just go ahead and simplify it and do 16. If you wrote four squared, it you probably get credit for it. Like I'm thinking math competition. If you wrote four squared, they probably count it right. But if it came down to tie breaks, they would take the team that wrote 16 over the team that wrote four squared, even though they're both technically correct. Technically correct, the best kind of correct. <laughs> It's technically not stealing because I wasn't going to buy it. So it's not like you lost money from me. Okay, so. Are you. Okay, so I took a picture of this because I uh, don't want you making fun of my graphs. <laughs> Not that any of you would ever do that, you jerks. You can sketch it, that's fine. See. It matters because we're going to now write the equation of this circle. Okay, leave yourself space in your notes the size of a, the size of a two and a half by two and a half square. And I will print this for you to paste down, you whiny little jerks. Okay, so what did I say were the only things you needed in order to grab a circle? The center and the radius. Okay, so on this graph, the center is pretty easy to find. Good. Negative three, negative two. And the radius can be found just by counting in either direction. I can count up or over. I guess technically you could count diagonally, but that would be like the dumbest possible way to find the radius. Because if I just count straight up, it's one, two. So the radius is once you know those numbers, it is exactly the same as the problem that we just did. So HK is going to be the negative three, negative two. And R is going to be two. So Huh? Did I print it out? When would I have done that? You just asked me to print it out like 30 seconds ago. I mean, I appreciate that you think I got those kind of skills. Can't you just use your mind power? So what I wrote right there is correct, but ugly. We can definitely simplify that quite a bit, actually. What should we do, everybody? 
Yep. X plus three squared. Y plus two squared equals four. And that is a much better answer because it's cleaned up, picked up, and put away. Clean up every day. Clean up, pick up, put away. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. That's from Daniel Tiger. That's the clean up song. Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, a land of make believe. Won't you ride along with me? Won't you ride along with me? Doodly -doo. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. You ready for a really hard one? Yeah. yeah. What piece of information are we missing? The radius. the radius. The two things you have to know are the center and the radius. We got the center. I can do almost this entire equation. This is H and this is K. I don't know the radius. All I know is that the circle passes through the point three negative eight. So what am I supposed to do? Yes, ma'am? So Pythagorean theorem, yes, but we're going to use a variation of the Pythagorean theorem because to know what the radius is, what I really want to know is how far is it from the center to this other point that the circle goes through. So I really want to know the length of that segment from radius to end of the circle. Or perhaps, perhaps I want to know, uh, what's another way to say like how far it is from here to here? The distance, I want to know the distance. I wonder if there's a formula I could use to find the distance. Oh, the distance formula. Now for 1000 bonus points, what is the distance formula? Oh, you could have had a thousand bonus points, but everybody forgot. Now the distance, the reason I said Pythagorean theorem is close is because the distance formula comes from the Pythagorean theorem. You're a genius. How'd you find it? <laughs> the distance formula tells me how far it is from one coordinate to the other. And that's what I want to know. How far is it from the center to the point the circle goes through, that's the distance. So the two points that I'm gonna use will be the center and this point that the circle goes through. So we'll call this one X1 and Y1, and we'll call this one X2 and Y2. Doesn't matter which is which, pick your favorites. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to I think I'm going to do a different color here so it'll look a little nicer in the formula. Oh, nope, I got to erase the whole thing. Emily's going to be bothered that the parentheses are green and everything else is yellow. It doesn't look well. Nope, <laughs> In the words of the great philosopher, Weird Al Yankovic, you finished second grade. I hope you can tell if you're doing good or doing well. Of who? <laughs> you don't know Weird Al? Say that again? You finished second grade. I hope you can tell if you're doing good or doing well. Weird Al Yankovic, the great philosopher and poet laureate. And he followed it up with, figure out the difference. Irony is not coincidence. And 
I thought you've gotten it through your spell. What's figurative and what's literal? Listen up when I tell you this. I hope you never use quotation marks for emphasis. Uh, <laughs> That's from his hit song, Word Crimes. I thought we'd listened to that before. No. We haven't listened to Word Crimes? Oh, before our next break, we're going to listen to Word Crimes. Because I think it's a good time to learn some grammar. Now did I stammer? Okay. We'll save that for right before our next break. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm just gonna do some simple simplification. Uh, three minus one is two and two squared is four. Negative eight minus negative five is negative three because that's negative eight plus five. That's negative three and negative three squared is positive nine. So I end up with the distance being square root of 13. I could type that into the calculator, but I'd have to round it and I don't want to. So that's the answer for what? R. So now I know H, I know K. And we know R. And we know R. Well, sort of, we got to actually we got to actually plug the numbers into the formula. Darn the luck. See? See what? <laughs> now, why would you be offended by that? Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So when people honk at you, it's because they like you so much. So the X minus one squared is fine. Uh, y minus negative 5 will be y plus 5. All right, here's the million dollar question for which you will be paid zero dollars. What's the square root of 13 squared? 13. It's a digital list. If they printed it, it would destroy the rainforest. Important to know your weaknesses. Dude, we got like two months to get their math skills, so we're gonna work on everything that we're not good at. Everything mathematical that you're not good at? Everything math related that you're not good at. If you try to fix everything you're not good at, you're gonna learn a bunch of skills that will not be useful to you at the math competition. Yeah. Are you telling me there's not a juggling chainsaws portion of the, of the math competition? I know. Because I wasn't good at that, and now I'm awesome. I think they were just looking at something. They already will. We're wearing matching shirts. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, I'm saying that it's a good thing. So, um, does anybody have a strategy for how we're going to solve this problem? Okay. Like that idea. That's a strategy. It's <laughs> not a good one, but technically a strategy. The radius. I do. Four. How do you know the radius is four? Because the center at zero is zero. Mm-hmm. And one of the things is zero. So I know from this information centered at the origin, those two pieces of information tell me that the radius is Make the formula. 
Which formula? The, 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 um, the first one. The circle formula? Yeah. Okay. Because it's on the origin. Okay. So what's that formula going to look like? You're telling me that the H and K are going to be what? Good, because it's centered at the origin. So my circle formula was x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And I can now do x squared plus y squared equals four squared or x squared plus y squared equals 16. Okay. Those two numbers. No, no, just keep going. Plug in those two numbers where? I thought you said H and K were both zero. As X and Y. You are so smart. So there we go. Two and 12, two, um, two and square root of 12. Two is going to be my X, square root 12 is going to be my Y. So I will have two squared plus square root of 12 squared equals 16. What am I looking for? What am I trying to see? Yeah, is it actually 16? That's exactly right. Okay, so two squared is four. Square root of 12 squared is 12. And hold on, let me get my calculator. Four plus 12 is 16. Which means, which means math. The point to square root 12. Do you want to see me cry? Yes, yes we do. If it works in the equation, it is on the circle. Is on the circle. If I had plugged in that point and instead of 16 equals 16, I got 15 equals 16, it's not on the circle. Now I love the way that Emily chose to solve this problem. Write the equation for a circle and then plug in X and Y. It's a great way to solve it. Actually, probably the fastest way to solve it. Can somebody tell me an equally accurate, but probably a little bit slower way to also answer this question that does not use the equation of a circle? The other one. Could I have used the distance formula to answer this question? By doing what? Okay, let Emily answer the question. Perfect. So I could have figured out, okay, if I know the radius is four, what's the distance from the center of the circle to two root 12? Is that also four? If it is, it's on the circle. And if it's not, then it's not. So smart. You are a genius. Now the, no. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I have showed you the standard form of a circle, but we also have what is called the general form of... No, it's just a nice side effect. You're only on page four because you write so big. <laughs> Christian's still on the first page because his notes are terrible. You can't count and you're on math team. Oh, <laughs> we just can't count. <laughs> I can't read either. <laughs>
<laughs> can't count or read. You're exactly what we're looking for on the math team. Oh, and then zero. <laughs> okay, yours actually do look like an O, so just don't complain. Is it an O or zero? We're asking you a it's question. So that would so make it a zero with a little slash through it. I think that makes it worse. A zero is like a really tall, skinny O. Oh, really? Whoever says advertising jingles don't work, all I had to do was say the letter O and you're singing the O'Reilly theme song. <laughs> okay, so in order to solve this problem, it involves going way back to your Algebra 1 days and doing a little bit of factoring. Because what you're gonna do is, we're gonna group together the X terms and the Y terms, and we're gonna put the constant over on the other side. So I'm gonna rewrite this problem with the X's right next to each other, grouped together. The Y's grouped together. And the 10 is being subtracted from both sides of the constants over there. So I got the X's grouped, the Y's grouped, and the constant has been banished to the other side of the equation. Mm -hmm. Are the C, D, or E's just random variables that we use to fill in this equation? Yeah, random numbers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we don't derive from specific names. Not that I know of. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do is something that you haven't done since your Algebra 1 days. And it was at the end of the semester in the dark times where you learned it via Zoom, and it is completing the square. <laughs> completing the square means what number do I need to put in here in the parentheses to make it a perfect square factor? Now this year's Algebra 1 kids haven't done it yet, but we did talk about perfect squares, so you might be able to figure it out. What number would need to go after the negative four in order for this to be a perfect square? It would be like 16 or something. Let, let me just tell you what it is for this one, and I think it'll help you get the next one. For this one, it's four. And the reason it's four is because x squared minus 4x plus four factors into um, x minus two, x minus two, which is a perfect square. X minus two times X minus two is the same thing as X minus two squared. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's part of the circle formula. Oh my God. It is? That's X minus H squared. Oh. 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 Hold on. What did I? I just added a four there. Am I allowed to just put plus four in the problem? No. No? If I put plus four there, I got to put plus four on the other side, right? No. Plus 16. Yep, Ellie's right. 
So that would be, that factors into y plus four and y plus four, which would be y plus four squared, sweet mother of all that is pure and holy. That's the other part of the circle formula. Oh wait, but hold on, I added 16 to that side. So I got to add 16 to this side as well. Now, for those of you that are mystified, where did the plus four, where did the plus 16 come from? Somebody give me, what's a quick little shortcut? How can I figure out what that number is? Well, look at the coefficient of the X. The coefficient of the X here was negative four. If I divide that by two and square it, what do I get? Four. The coefficient here is eight. If I divide that by two and square it, what do I get? So you take the coefficient, divide by two and square it. That tells you what to add. I'm gonna do even better than that. I'm gonna write it down, but first we're gonna finish this problem. Negative 10 plus four plus 16 is 10. Here's the equation. If I take this and add them together, I get 10. So um, let's go back here. To figure out what this number was, I took the negative four and divided by two and squared it. To figure out the 16, I took the eight divided by two and squared it. Okay, so this, uh, this equation that we just did, what's the center of this circle? Good, and what's the radius? You got it. You are so smart. I'm gonna start telling people I know you. Okay, let me give you one more of those completing the square problems. Or in this case, completing the circle, <laughs> right guys? <laughs> <laughs> we laughed. Give me extra credit. Let me give you one more of these just to make sure you got it down. Because everybody wants to get down with the circles, right, guys? Don't be a play a hater. Get down with the circles. Mr. Taylor, just stop. Yeah. Just like my pet duck, I'm going to show you how to get down. Can you just stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to dance with my pillow. I get down with down. <laughs> no, I'm disappointed in Bishop saying that's quacked. <laughs> Very disappointing. Okay, so what do we do first? We group the X's. Group the Y's. Exactly. The constant comes to live over on the other side. Does he have to take it on the front? Yeah, he wants like all of his body parts into a negative. Okay. Yes. Half of 10 is five. Five squared is 25. But if I added 25 there, I got to add it to the other side. Yep. I'm literally not writing anything. You said plus 49. I wrote that and then I stopped. So maybe you need to hold up a sec. Oh, they're not bad. Mm -hmm. Correct. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, minus because it's a minus 14. Mm -hmm. So the center is Mm-hmm. And the radius is? Hey, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Yeah, if you don't believe in gosh, then you go to heck. Does anybody have any questions about writing the equation of a circle? That's a good question. We're finished now. We're finished with equations of circles. We'll never be finished with math. We've gotten better about saying finished instead of done. Your English is coming along nicely thanks to math class. <laughs> when you beg for mercy, you are very grammatically correct. <laughs>